Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins next on Madden NFL 24. Well, much of the country is struggling under cold temps and some of that white stuff. No such troubles here at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here. As it'll be the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Miami Dolphins. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's CD, the Dolphins. They've got some high hopes for 2023. They feel like they've got the pieces to make a run. They need a little bit of health, but they think they can be right there in the AFC East. And they'll want every game to be a track meet because speed is their calling card. If they're able to sprint out there ahead of people and make them chase, they'll be tough to reel in. Meanwhile, for the Cowboys, the wait goes on for a Super Bowl appearance. This will be the 28th season since they last won Super Bowl 30 in 1996. Let's add on to that. They haven't even been to an NFC Championship game since 1996. And you know, that does not sit well in the owner's box for the Dallas Cowboys, continuing to try to find their way back to the top of the mountain. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started, and we are underway from Miami. And he returns this to the 22. So the Cowboys ready to go on offense for the first time, and it is their now 30-year-old quarterback, Dak Prescott, who leads the way. And how about the toughness of Dak Prescott? We see him all the time on the field. And remember when he had that serious ankle injury, would he return to form? Boy, did he ever. And he was better than ever, and that's great for the NFL. Terrific resilience, playing at a high level, capable of winning a championship with his arm and his legs. Meanwhile, Dax throw pulled in by Lamb. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 14 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. And we see the emphasis early here. Get your star receiver involved able to do it successfully not a bad start to begin with that's for sure and to me this play says our guy is better than your guys because you know a player of his stature he won't just be single covered all game long it's going to involve multiple people and right away they told the other team guess what he's just better now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a dolphin shaking up on the play we'll get an update when we come back to hard rock stadium from the 38 now, here comes second and eight. They run it for the first time with Tony Pollard. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. And the Dolphins beef up the secondary here as they look to stop him on third down. On play action, Prescott. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 11 yards and a Cowboy first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Running right, it's Pollard. Muscles him off. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps him advancing the ball. Second and five. Prescott now. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Excellent defensive effort to get to him and provide a little contact before the catch could be made cleanly. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Here's Prescott. And he 
is caught. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 34-yard line. It's a gain of 12, and the Cowboys pick up the first. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. First down, Prescott. Looking for the out route here, and he's got Cooks. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. He'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to... Touchdown, Cowboys! Brandon Cooks! 28 yards and the Cowboys get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon they gotta love that nine play drive results in six points that means they're doing the dictating that means that they've described how the game's going to go they're playing at their tempo at their pace if you're on the other side of the ball if you're playing defense defense is not methodical they've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc Now the extra point up and good by Aubrey. And it's now a 7-0 game. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Now Tua Tungabailoa gets set to lead this Dolphins offense for the first time. The secret to his game and his success, incredible chemistry with each and every one of the guys he catches passes with it. And not only does he ask him to stay after practice or meet it before practice, he actually demands it because he knows if they have that kind of chemistry built up, they will be hard to beat each and every ball game. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense. Pick it up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Second down, here's Mostert again. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes there's a little tread left on the tires. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam coming out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. From the 46, here's the second down and six. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not forcing that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Two are going to throw. Oh, looking for Ronald, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And the Cowboys are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. You've got to know as a quarterback, it's going to be tough to outthink this guy in the defensive backfield. He's been at it 11 years now, so he knows all the ins and outs of the position. And he's in the right spot there to come up with the interception. Second drive forthcoming here for the Dallas Cowboys. 
They'll have good field position at midfield following the turnover as they start with the first down here. They'll go with Pollard here on first down. Oh, able to avoid him. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. When you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. Throwing. Prescott. Left side to Lamb. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. A first down throw for Prescott. He's got his man. It's Gallup. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Now a first and 10 at the 11. There's Prescott. That ball is caught. It's Gallup. Touchdown, Cowboys. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Cowboys are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. They've got to be thrilled on the road right now. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, and quickly trying to make it 14 to nothing. Yeah, and mentioned it already. On the road, to be able to go into someone else's house and establish a start like that, obviously your confidence rises in a big way, and you're putting some doubt in their minds. Aubrey good with a PAT, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. So Miami coming out for their second drive. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan, or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? Tackle made that time by Chauncey Goldston. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Now second and nine. Once again, it's Mostert. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Fourteen nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami, it's the Dolphins with the football. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. They've got his man complete. Down to the 10. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Jalen Wilder. 77 yards, and the Dolphins have cut it back within a score. They were already down two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, they don't get something done on this drive, turn it back over. This game could be 88 out the gate early. What, 88 out the gate? Yeah. What's that? Well, listen, I used to hear my old man talk about it. It usually meant... That thing's done. Oh, well, now that they got the touchdown, it's, it's not 88 out the game. We still got a good game going ahead of us.
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Kevontae Turpin now to return. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Dallas offense set for this next drive. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. They run straight ahead here with Pollard, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle. That's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Ball on the 39. Here's second down and eight. Now Prescott. They'll drop this underneath to Pollard. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Now they need two. Here's third down. Trying to run for it with Pollard. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. From this vantage point, they've got the lead here. So for me, that'd be enough to go ahead and punt the football and let my defense defend the long field. If you go for it, you don't get it, then you really put your defense in a tight spot. Yeah, but we never know what people ultimately will decide to do here on fourth and inches. And the Cowboys going to bring on Brian Anger to punt on fourth down. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. And Miami's offense set and ready to go. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Now the rookie third-round pick, it's Devon Achan. They find some open field here. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield at a 48-yard line. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. A perfect example right there, Charles, of why they love this rookie runner. And think about how the NFL and the college games are meshing together more and more. You don't have to go to the NFL and learn a new set of skills. What you did in college often makes you ready for the NFL. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Now a second and ten. Throwing now is Chungabailoa. That's caught by the Notre Dame man. It's Durham Smythe. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here is third and five. Here's Tua. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 28. That would go for 16, and the drive will continue. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try to find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. On first down, Tonga Bailoa gets this one to Hill. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays.
From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now Tua. And he will take it in from Dolphins touchdown. Tua Tagovailoa, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from drawing level. Sanders down to add the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A drive that time of six plays. And it was to a tongue of Iloa who called his own number and finished it off with a touchdown run. Tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And that 14-0 lead to begin the ball game, well, that's gone now. Time to regroup. I think even up two touchdowns, they knew this wasn't going to be a walk in the park, and I think that's why we would see the head coach going up and down the sidelines telling his team, let's stay with it, let's keep going. It's almost like he knew they were going to make their run at him, and they have. As you said, let's see if they can regroup and get going again. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pick up here toward the end of the first half. First down now, but that clock rolling. Looking to throw, Prescott. And that's complete downfield to Cooks. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Another big gainer, two in succession, as this one goes for 32. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things not deep downfield that can hurt your defense. Prescott looks to throw on first. Open man, right side, it's Lamb. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. This second and four. Prescott yet again. And that's complete to Cooks. And the Cowboys are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Scott. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Emmanuel Agba that time able to drop him for a loss. Well, that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. This ball is caught by Lamb. Touchdown, Dallas. Three touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. So they're able to break the tie just before halftime. Now they just don't want anything crazy to happen on the ensuing kickoff. Yeah, they want to just add the extra point. 
get the kickoff taken care of and get to the locker room with the lead that they fought so hard to get. Now the extra point up and good by Aubrey. And the lead is now 21-14. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you, too, in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a couple of high-octane offenses getting it done in the first half. Both teams had no problems moving the football. And you have to think, the team whose defense shows up in the second half is going to be the one who walks out of here with a victory. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Dolphins down on the scoreboard, but they'll have it first as we get going in this third quarter. Braxton Berrios selected to bring it out. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result that he opted for the touchback. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point, and now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together, come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Over the middle, incomplete to Waddle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. Short throw hauled in by Croft. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. And he'll get it out to midfield. It's again, it's about it right at midfield at the 50. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I don't care what anyone says. I want a big time back in in this kind of yardage each and every time I step on the field. A tone setter, these guys are hard to find. On play action, here's Tua. Finding Waddle crossing the field and bringing it in. 
17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Over the middle, he gets it to Barrios. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. From the 31, here's a second and eight. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And he's down into the red zone at the 16 after a game of 16. First and 10. They should put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling in south for a nice chunk of yardage. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Two and a throw again. He's got it. Touchdown. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have it, you use it. Because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. Sanders on for the extra point. He's got it, and we're all tied at 21. So that drive in total eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. Out comes CeeDee Lamb and the rest of the Dallas offense. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good. But there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check. But he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, makes, you do. It makes you, get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. Going to run again here with Pollard. One tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Playing against a 3 4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front, and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Here's Berrios. It's a 43-yard punt, a return of five, and it'll be Dolphin football. Jalen Waddle running out, and that means that the Dolphins ready for another drive on offense. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. That feels like he 
can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looking really, really sharp. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Third down and one. Play action, now it's Tua. Toward the sideline, intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. Well, NFL quarterbacks have learned the hard way. You're not gonna get rich thrown against this guy. He's definitely too good. And this is now his second interception of the ball game. And if I'm running the offense, I've got to tell my guys, you've got to go work on the other corner. And now here come the Cowboys. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to pump then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Third quarter from Miami. This is second and ten. To throw is Prescott. Able to hit his target, Lamb. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. If they get nothing else here on third down, it'd be a 53-yard attempt from this spot. On play action, Prescott. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Play fake. Here's Prescott. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let it just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Second and ten. Pollard will take it up the gut. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, it's Prescott. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. So a critical mistake, roughing the passer. Now it's first and goal. Throwing, Prescott. And he's got it! Touchdown! Dak Prescott now four touchdown passes on the afternoon. And the Cowboys have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here on the fourth. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside, who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. 
Aubrey good with a PAT. And they will take a seven-point lead. Dolphins, 21. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Miami set to take over. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Here's second and ten. Two are going to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? The offense on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Looking to pass. Tua. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down in the process. Throwing now is Tungamailoa. And he fends him off, eluding the pressure right. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. They're not out of it yet, but in order to come back, they need to play clean football the rest of the way. He makes the correct read there, passing on challenging a blanket coverage and getting the first down with his legs instead. On first and ten, it's Mostert. Nifty move. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the ten to the seven. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. That was excellent from start to finish, from the blocking to the running, just well executed. And now let's look ahead because after that, how about a little play action, maybe a little bootleg? and get the quarterback out on the corner and give him a little run pass option. And they're right down here looking for six. From the gun, it's Tua. Touchdown, Dolphins! Braxton Barrios, a seven-yard touchdown ground. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. Six points for the Dolphins.
Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. It's a foot race. And they are not going to catch him. He's in. Touchdown, Cowboys. This game wasn't tied for long. How about that? A big return here in the fourth. And this is that time of game where every big play is magnified. Fourth quarter, kick return for a touchdown. You've got to feel great about your chances at this stage of the game. Yeah, they regain the lead. Now we'll see if they can hold it. Now the extra point up and good by Aubrey. And they will take a seven-point lead. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn it into a play action, and throw one deep. Here's second down and three. Motion man is Barrios. Now a fake on the Jets, sweep and a give to Mostert. They'll get a yard, that's all, as they get him down at the 28. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. Here now, third down. Throwing Tua. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going. And I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now. Has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. Tua, oh, what a move. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for first down. Well, they did the part they had to do. Quick throw, got the first down. But that doesn't allow him to relax. They still have plenty of work to do. Here's first and 10. Here's Tua. This is caught by Waddle. And yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Now that is the two-minute drill, and it's very best. Get the completion, get a big chunk of yardage, and then get out of bounds to save those timeouts. You cannot do it any better than that. Here's first down. Now Tua. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. 
Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. Another try, second and ten now. Here's Tua. And his throw is incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Tongue of Iloa. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. Two and a throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Cowboys' defense is going to get them the football back. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep. They'll take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. The Cowboys on their way to victory as they take a knee. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. <laughs> So this one will end in a victory for the Dallas Cowboys. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them this one is now planted. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. And with that, we sign off from Miami.